player controllers. They're amazing when they work, but scary when they don't. That is why I made you one that works. Introducing my player controller. It comes with all the basic functionality that you expect from a player controller. Plus climbing. That's right. This player controller is based on the one that I use for my vehicle parkour game. If you want to remove climbing, skip to this timestamp for instructions. It's available for free on GitHub. The link to that is in the description. The code is commented, so you'll have a good understanding of what you're working with. My name's Simon Honkvist, and this is my player controller. So, what can this thing do? Well, it can walk, run, jump, fall, slide, and of course, climb. It also has first and third person cameras, but they are very basic. Each distinct ability has its own script, but is attached to the player. The abilities are executed by a state machine, which has two states, walking and climbing. Others would have maybe made the decision to make the individual states for each ability, especially when doing animations, but I decided not to since I believe the only major differences are between climbing and not climbing. If you wish to add your own state, you can do so by creating a new class inheriting from the state class. Then you add this simple constructor and you're now free to override the default behavior, create your own functionality. Let's say I want to switch to a new state I created called PL test state. PL indicates that it's a state for the player. If I want to switch at this point in my code, I can write player controller dot set state new test state player controller. You might also want to create your own ability. This is even simpler. Just create a new mono behavior called something like PL test ability and create some public methods. Then in player controller.cs Add a variable for your ability, like I've done for the other abilities. In the awake method, store a reference to that ability using get component. Lastly, add the script to the player. Now you can execute your ability anywhere in the code by accessing the reference on the player controller and calling your methods. Let's um, quickly go over how to remove all references to the climb ability. Stop by deleting or commenting out the end entire plclimb.cs and plclimbing.cs scripts. Now look at the errors that appear. Click on each error message and follow it to the error in the code. Then simply remove the entire block of code that mentions climbing or grabbing something. Like this. That's it. Really, that's a crude way. If you decide to keep the climbing ability, Remember to set all the objects that you want to be able to climb to the grabbable layer. Otherwise, the climbing just won't work. The key bindings for all the abilities are stored in inputhandler.cs. If you want to bind a key to your new ability, begin with adding it like this in the key bindings class. Then go into the abstract state class and add a new public virtual void method. This method will be called when you press the key. So I'll make the default behavior be to access PL test ability from the player controller and execute a method called do stuff. Then I'll create a new public virtual bool method, which will be used to check if the requirements for performing an action are met. And these requirements, of course, include checking if the key is pressed, but also if, for example, player has to be grounded. When both these methods are created, go back to the input handler and write a simple if statement using the methods like this. To actually assign a key to the action, go into the player's inspector and select a key of your choice. I have now gone through what the player controller can do. Because I'm an honest man, I'm now going to go through what it can do. 
The biggest issue with my character controller is how it interacts with dynamic objects. It doesn't push or get pushed by rigid bodies, nor does it react well with moving platforms. And this controller works best with a static environment. Additionally, there are some strange quirks with steep slopes. Regardless of the slope limit set in the character controller's settings, Unity sometimes decides to ground the player when they shouldn't. I think this is why jumping towards its steep slope doesn't work, and also why you can stick to really steep slopes by pushing yourself towards them, even if they aren't in the grabbable layer. If you want to play a controller that accomplishes these things, we're considering buying the Kinematic Character Controller from Philippe saint amand or Character Controller Movement Fundamentals from Jan Ott. The link to both of these assets are in the description. I've personally not used them, but they have received overwhelmingly positive reviews on the asset store. If I someday implement all the functionalities seen in those assets, I too put my controller on the asset store. This basic version will always be available for free on GitHub. And that's basically all you need to know to use the player controller. This has been a short video, but there's not a lot of interesting stuff to explain here. Just a ton of small fixes to make the Unity character controller work as intended. As I previously mentioned, the code is extensively commented to make specific things easier to understand. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.